So, poor you, you said you wrote something for the Daily Dispatch, the, 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 the East London paper? What, <laughs> where, where was this from? Um, actually, this was um, during a time when I was receiving um, e e e e petitions to basically ban the, the movie in Neba. Because oh, what, this what's, movie what's, what's deals with, with uh, circumcision and it, it, it has brought in the, 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 the gay perspective onto this custom as well. Identifying this custom as a custom that does not uh, recognize certain gender orientations within that cultural space. So now a lot of people, because I'm this poet who, who writes about mm -hmm. uh, culture and traditions, they were like, please, let's protest against this movie. We want you to sign our petition so that this movie is banned. Now imagine you're telling <laughs> you're telling a, a producer, you're telling a filmmaker, you, you're telling a writer to basically destroy something that's been written. I'm like, look, I'm not going to actually petition against this movie. Mm. And then I stated the reasons. This was a, a, a Facebook status. Now Daily Dispatch, they took that status as it is and then they published it as an opinion piece in, in their newspaper. And now this is when people started sharing it at the, at the Rhodes page. Now, a lot of students at the Rhodes page were blasting me off because of this. Because how can you say that uh, we must involve women in the tradition or in the, in the custom of Fulwaluko? Oh, mama, bagenda, we plant. I'm like, yes, yes, I understand, guys. But the thing is, when these values were, were conjured up, there was that assumption that men were always there. Every household had a man who would take care of the man business, right? Now, if you are telling me as a father, I have no place in talking to my child about childbirth or talking to my child about menstruation and all of that, but if I'm raising a child as a single father and I know this child forever until the age of 13, 14, when she starts going on a period. Who do I trust as a parent to actually talk to my child about these things? Now let's reverse it. You take a woman who's gonna raise these three boys from birth up until now, and now that these boys have to go to, to the bush, which man is suddenly gonna come miraculously from somewhere with intentions of instilling values to these boys. What does he know about those boys and so on? So obviously if people are complaining, then there's something to talk about here. That means we must consider the fact that eh, well, even though apartheid and colonialism eh, emasculinized African men, but at the end of the day, nowadays we are just simply not there. Because you, you may have like men who are professionals who will decide not to raise their children and stay away from their, from their sons. Who is going to raise these children? Who is going to make the decisions that will see these boys that they are safe during this, this, uh, this process? So this is men my... Who are, men who are in jail. <laughs> no, no, no. The, no, no, the I'm, no, I'm saying if oh. a man is in jail, they're not home. <laughs> Well, I mean, if a at man least the man in jail man, has got man. an excuse, right? <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying the, the men are not there. The, 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 man, the men in jail, men who abandoned their families, all well, that stuff is, I guess it wasn't known yeah. way, way, way back when. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just, I'm just, because, yeah. Because now, I mean, if you've got a home, uh, like nine, uh, more than 60% actually of households are run by females, whether it's elderly women or even young teenage mothers we need to find a way as custodians of our own traditions we need to find a way of involving women in decision making processes as far as the safety of the children goes when these children are being taken to the bush but everybody just gets so emotional it sounds like i am saying yeah let's let movies like these expose our secrets to the world that's not what i'm saying <laughs> But what I'm saying is the fact that where there's smoke, there's a fire. That means if people are becoming super sensitive about this, that means there's really an issue here. And it's attacking men directly. And now there's other spin-offs from this environment whereby now you find that the boys come back yet being young men, not even having an idea of what it means to be a young man. And when the mothers take these boys to the bush, 
they will call whichever boy from next door to go and become ikangata without knowing what qualities you should be looking for from the from the young man who's going to be taking care of your children in the bush. We as men, What's we ikangata? know. What's the person that's I, I, ikangata. What, what is that? It's, uh, it, we can call him the, the, the nurse of the boys in the bush. Yeah, but now the, the, the ladies don't know that, okay, look, there are kids who have no jobs, who come from jail and this and that, who, are, who bring these kind of influences, and therefore I do not want these boys going to the bush when my son is there. They just are happy that there's some guy who's willing to take care of everything. When the boy comes back, you take the boy to Selborne High or whatever, Hudson Park, and when they come back from the bush, they come back speaking like thugs, like they've been in jail because the, the, the love of our language and our izhuni posetu has escalated to that level that we still love that language that is spoken there, yet we do not know it. So these boys who come from the, 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 the prison, they invent it and they take that jail lingo and they call it his daughter, which is, you know, the language that you're supposed to be speaking amongst each other as men. And yet that's not what it is. But what is there to replace this? If we're saying that as who are you going to replace those people with? Who's going to make these decisions on behalf of these boys if 60% of these boys don't have fathers? So this is what the article was about. The article was about having to review our situation, uh, having to understand that there are other gender identities. Uh, for instance, there are boys who, 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 who identify themselves and see themselves as um, trans, transsexual or transgender girls, right? But as the father, I'm going to be like, no, this boy, he's too soft. He hangs around too much with his sisters and his mothers. Let's take him to the bush. He's going to come back a man, but actually, in this country right now, it's legal that people can decide what gender, you know, they follow, or what gender they, they identify themselves as. Yet, these customs do not allow such new, um, new newly found... New notions. Yeah, newly found notions of, of being and of becoming. But don't now you don't have to ask where those notions came from and is there alternative reason for those <laughs> notions? You, you, you know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot of folks say, well, look, that might be true, but you, you're, uh, the masculinity or femininity is, 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 is an attitude. It's shaped by, uh, I guess you would say modernity. You, it, it's shaped by what you what you see on TV, what you've been exposed to, and and um, and, and <coughs> folks just want, I guess, back in the tradition when there was just male identity, female identity, and the male was hard, the female. The, but then again, when I think about that. How do you know what was happening before colonialism came? Maybe you still had this, this gender stuff, but, but, but only colonialism made it illegal or, or identified something like that. You understand? I'm just throwing yeah, ideas yeah. out there. Um, I'm just trying to figure well, it out. Well, I mean, in our languages, the, we, we even have some names that you, you, you may not know the origin of that name. But what I know is that, for instance, the word uh, italase, it's a very old name. Uh, it's, a, it's an old word. I, 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 italase. Italase, yeah. And what does Which it mean? Which basically means a bisexual individual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, some of these um, um, non conforming genders were seen as a taboo then, not probably because they were being demonized, but because in our society, if you have a, an opinion of a, min a minority opinion <laughs> it doesn't matter how how good you think your word is like you you might feel a, a bit uh, ashamed to bring yourself out there now we're not talking about that or Adichie uh, was they've written about uh, homosexuality in Africa we, we're not going into that we're talking about right now with all the things that we've already accepted. For instance, in our university, as, uh, as part of uh, the transformation agenda, gender equity in the university is one of the things that we, we all champion right now. So I wouldn't understand why 90% uh, of students from Rhodes University 
or rather male students who are uh, you know heterosexual males who believe they are the guardians of you know African customs I wouldn't understand why they would associate themselves with an institution that deals with transformation in the in the way that we are dealing with transformation in an all-inclusive all gender inclusive environment and yet not be able to actually accommodate the very people that we are saying we are and we are equally those people we can't represent them now in in our custom why why am i going to talk about e equality uh, gender equality in class but not talk about gender equality when it comes to our customs so what i'm saying is um i feel people are overreacting people have got personal agendas and vendettas and people have got their own experiences that they are trying to safeguard and, and nurture or even justify. And I am saying that tradition or customs need to evolve with time. For instance, let me make an example. Ukutwala, which is another form of marrying a, a daughter, somebody's daughter in our cultures, right? Ukutwala. You would send your daughter to go buy some some fruit and veg somewhere. Yeah, look, uh, I'm gonna just uh, for all that. So you may send your your daughter to go get uh, something, uh, some water from from you know from below the village in the in the stream, and then your daughter doesn't come back, and then two days later, a, a head of cattle comes to your to your crawl and some young men and his uncles and they say hey look your daughter that you sent to fetch water two days ago uh, we have decided to make that person our wife you know our son's wife so here are cows and wala wala that was a custom right and as a father you you'd be forced to kind of accept those uh, that lobola and accept the situation but nowadays you would call that abduction kidnapping right mm. now does this make us less african than we are the mm. fact that we no longer allow men to just ad abduct children on the streets with the purpose of wanting to 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 marry them i mean one of the books i was reading just now child soldier talks about that how children are taken and forced into marriage in in other upper african uh, countries but nowadays that is illegal now we're talking about circumcision. We're talking about the involvement of Abanda Bango Mama women. We're talking about the involvement of other people who are uh, who are identifying differently in terms of their gender, and uh, people who may identify with a gender that they don't actually uh, have sexual organs for, like you know, a, a transsexual girl. Men will bring those children straight to the bush and those children will be abused there because they are soft and all of that. Now we're saying, let's not talk about this issue. Let's not involve people who are women in this issue. Mm. And I mean, I don't know, but I'm saying that it's time to talk and we shouldn't be afraid of, um, of transformation because every time something new comes from another culture into ours we always worry that this is the demise of our own culture our own identity and when the language started being spoken we were like this is the end of african languages but even today we still thrive so some of these things let's just deal with them without being final about our opinions for anybody mm. yeah okay thank you poor <laughs>